And our scripture today is taken from 1 Samuel 4, 8 to 11. Woe to us. Who? Sorry. Oh, sorry. 8, 8 4 to 11. Oh, sorry. I wondered about that. <laughs> oh, is the bulletin wrong? Yeah. I don't know. Look at my bulletin was wrong. Oh, okay. I wondered about that scripture, but hey, I thought, oh, about Hop and Phineas. Hey, I thought he was going off on a tangent today. I still might. You never know. Okay, let's try 1 Samuel 8, 4 to 11. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king for us to judge us like all the nations. But the thing was displeasing in the sight of Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in regard to all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Like all the, deeds, all the deeds which they have done since that day that I brought them up from Egypt, even to this day, in that they have forsaken me and served other gods. So they are doing to you, and they are doing to you also. Now then, listen to their voice. However, you s shall solemnly warn them and tell them of the procedure of the king who will reign over them. So Samuel spoke all the words of the Lord to the people who would ask of him a king. He said, This will be the procedure of the king who will reign over you, and he will take your sons and place them for himself in his chariots and among his horsemen, and they will run before his chariots. So the problem with uh, being an expository sort of preacher, which means I, I generally have a scripture and then I preach from that scripture, is if we don't have the right scripture, the sermon doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? So we have to make sure we have that. And yep, you're absolutely right. The bulletin's wrong. So <laughs> I could wing it. It's true. But I, if I wing it, we're definitely going on a tangent. <laughs> okay. So in our scripture for today, we find the Israelites asking Samuel to pick a king for them. Now in the past, they have had a righteous person set over them as a judge. And they've allowed their king to be God. Now as Samuel begins to get to an advanced age, the people of Israel look to the other countries that are around them. And they see that they all have kings ruling over them. And they tell Samuel... Hey, you've been great, but you're getting old, and your kids are not like you. They're not godly, and they're not going to follow in your footsteps. So we're going to need you to ask God to put a king over us. Now, Samuel does not like this idea at all, but he goes to God anyways. And God tells Samuel, you know, don't take this personally. They're not rejecting you as their judge. They're rejecting me as their king. So if they want a king, I will raise a king above them to rule them. And they will know what it's like to have a person rule them as king. And he's going to take their sons, and he's going to place them wherever he wants to. And he's going to force them to fight in his army. And he's not only that, he's going to put them in front of his horsemen so that they can be knocked down first. And God is saying that this king that he's going to raise up is going to put his needs, the king's needs, before the people's needs. So when we think about the Israelites and what they did, how can we see this sort of thing playing out in our own lives today? And what lesson can we take from the mistake that they made? 
Well, there are two old sayings that come to mind. The first being, the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. Now, just like the Israelites, we as a people tend to look at how others are living, seeing all the things that they have, and we think we should have that too. We become so calculating in the decisions that we make. We look at all the angles that are out there to make our decisions and then hope what we decide will bring us a return. Whether it be more money, more power, or simply a higher standing in this world. Now perhaps you've seen this for yourself. Oh, if I can just find the right stock at the right time, then I would be rich. Oh, if I could just make the right friends in life, it would be so much better for me. If I could just get into the right club, then I would be set socially. So when I think about this mindset, I get transported uh, back to middle school. Or for me, it was junior high where I grew up. And I think something like this. What do I need to get in with the cool kids? Do I need to change my hair, which for me was not an option? My clothes? Or if I date the right person, then my social standing will go up. And I'm reminded of a story from my youth. Uh, I had a friend who was dating a, a very nice young lady. And she was very kind and seemed to be an all-around very good person. And they seemed to be pretty happy together. But the problem came up. She wasn't one of the cool kids. And then the word got out that one of the more popular girls had a crush on my friend. So what did he do? Well, he broke up with the nice girl in hopes of going out with the more popular girl. And that didn't work out for him because it turns out the popular girl didn't really like him at all. It was just a rumor that someone had started. And then he decided that he would try to go back and ask the nice girl to be his girlfriend again. And she told him, since she was nice, to go kick rocks. Now I know that this seems like a trivial story when we think about our lives as adults today, but I think it still makes sense about this idea and the mistakes that we make. See, we have a loving God, but we treat him like that nice girl. Whenever there's a chance for us to get ahead in some way, we set him aside and we pursue the thing that we think will make us happier or get us ahead. And often we end up finding that the thing we're chasing instead of God turns out nothing to be like we thought it would be. The things people chase like wealth, power, fame, they often lead to those people just feeling empty. And they find that the only way that they can have meaning is to chase those things even harder. And they find themselves in a never-ending cycle of chasing after those things. See, I pray that we can see those things for the hollow nothingness that they are. They are nothing but fleeting pleasures in this life. And they are absolutely nothing compared to the promise of eternity with Jesus. Now, luckily for us, God is much more forgiving than that nice girl was to my friend. See, we are blessed to serve a God who is willing to forgive us when we make the mistake of going after the wrong things in this life. The other thing that comes to mind when I think about the Israelites of this time period and how it can apply to us today is the thought of keeping up with the Joneses. You see, the people of Israel looked around to their neighbors. They saw these other nations being ruled by kings, and they thought, we need to do that too. We have to do this in order to keep up with them. See, they're willing to put God aside in order to begin to function more like the world around them. The God that delivered them from Egypt. The God that took them to the promised land. The one that they had set above all. They were willing to put him aside just to be like the other nations. Now, I know it seems ridiculous that we put it into such simple terms like keeping up with the Joneses. 
But do we not see the same thing in our world today? We are given freely the chance of salvation. We are given freely the love of the creator of all things, yet many reject that gift. And perhaps even worse, those that accept the gift but then put it aside when there is something to be gained in this earthly realm. See, there are countless stories of people that have been entrusted with funds in the church only to put aside their commitment to God to take those funds for themselves when it becomes convenient. And then when I think about these things in our modern world, it becomes easier to understand how the Israelites would make a mistake like this. But there are two ways that we need to ensure that we are not making the same mistake. One, we need to think about the decisions that we make when it comes to the priorities in our lives. We must not be willing to set aside our Lord and Savior just because of a chance of improving our station in this world. We must make sure that we are not placing things like our jobs or our politics or our finances above our need to follow God. The second way we can make sure we're not making these mistakes and that we are, we are making sure we keep God as the king of our lives is simply to practice gratitude. You see, if we stop and think about all the blessings that God has given to us, it becomes much easier for us to remember that he is our king. And when you take the attitude of a humble servant the same way that Jesus did, then it becomes easier for us to place God at the top of our priority list. So let us strive to make sure that we are keeping God as our king, praising him in all that we do and serving him in ways that are pleasing to him. My challenges for you this week are, this, are these. Are you putting God first in your life? Are you making sure that you're not setting him aside when other things come along that seem more important? And if not, sit down this week and think about how you can start to realign your priorities to keep God as your king. Amen.